Hi, I'm Steve Wood from Manyhu, and I'm just going to walk you through the latest update uh, and the features that we've added to the Manyhu platform as we roll through our uh, public beta. Um, uh, as always, make sure you have a look at the Getting Started guide, and there you'll find information about configuring the software and getting uh, it set up initially. Um, I'll assume for the purposes of this demo that you've actually done um, uh, that that configuration work, and if you've done that, what you'll see is that you've uh, you'll have uh, installed the Salesforce service, um, and you'll see some of the things I'm about to show you as you go through the software. So, one of the things we've added um, as we move up the stack first, you know that we've have the services, which allows you to uh, connect with Salesforce. And if you've been noticing when you um, built uh, did the Salesforce installation, you would have noticed that a whole bunch of types were listed that represented all of the objects in your flow. So I'm going to basically walk you up the stack and explain each uh, piece of it. So the first bit is these types. And one of the things that happens when you install the Salesforce connector is that we bring in all the types from your Salesforce org. So for example, if I look at the Salesforce uh, account type, and then I can, I'll just open this, you'll see the, the uh, familiar fields that you're uh, used to seeing. So you've got the you know last activity date you know is it active etc. We've taken the friendly names um, from Salesforce. You've got a nicer view um, of of how it fits together. But what's neat is these types and these are types just like in Salesforce. They're the objects, the custom objects that you have, or the standard objects that you have. But what we do is we bind it to your Salesforce org. So here you'll you'll probably see um, if you've installed this before just account. Uh, rather than the salesforce.com account binding. That, that's what happens if you just install it with a new update. But if I just edit this binding, what you'll see is that a binding represents what happens when an object of this type is saved. And what happens is, is anything that you store in the shipping city um, property in your um, uh, object will then be mapped to the shipping city uh, field in Salesforce. Same with custom priority. So basically this is just the friendly name mapping to the uh, underlying Salesforce name. And what it means is that when you're using objects of this type, when you go to save them, it'll use these, this binding to kind of know that anything you stick in the shipping street will be uh, stored in the field uh, for shipping street. And that's how it works. But what's neat is that um, you, as we add more connectors to the system, is you'll be able to add more bindings. So for example, with a Salesforce account, is that you could load the fields using a binding for SAP and then save the account using the binding for Salesforce but in your app you're only just using the account um, type. So I hope that makes sense. That's just a little preview. We'll be adding more documentation around this. So we have the types and then what we also have is these values and you'd seen this before. You could create the string values and the password values and if you've gone through the getting started guide you'll have these um, values here already. The Salesforce email etc. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create two new values. I'm going to make these values for my demonstration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create two new um, prospects. And let's imagine for the sake of argument that we're going to uh, basically take down the details of two new um, prospects that are going to be policy holders on maybe uh, a bit of insurance. And both of the people that we're going to bring in are both going to be put into Salesforce as leads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two values, one for the main policy holder and then one for the dependent, uh, maybe the spouse, I guess we could say. So I'll create uh, a new value. We're then prompted here. And what you'll notice in the, in the list of options here is we now have this new list and object type. So I'm going to say I'm going to create a new value, which is an object, and it's going to be of type uh, lead. Um, so the language is a little different from Salesforce in the sense that um, uh, normally you might call the lead the object. In this case, we're actually calling the value an object. So you'll have to get your head around that. Um, once we then create uh, the object, we can then just give it a name. So I'll call this uh, uh, this this the sort of uh, main uh, sort of policy uh, main, and that'll be the main policy holder. And we'll just set that to be uh, private for now. Okay. And then we're going to create another value, which is going to hold the, the spouse. And we'll, so we'll create that. And that will also be of type lead. So we kind of go, all right, so uh, create new. Then we go to our object. We then have our list of all the objects we could choose from. 
uh, in this case it's going to be lead and then we hit next and then we can just give it the the um, uh, the dependence so we'll just call it uh, policy spouse husband or wife so we'll just uh, and then private as well so now we basically have just to kind of think about this we have two values of type lead which means they have all the properties that you would be used to in a Salesforce lead first name last name company contacted etc so these values now can be used um, to assign those those properties and we can equally save these values back to Salesforce um, once we've kind of populated the various properties or fields, if you like, on these on these values. So I'll close that. Now the next stage, yeah, we'll go up and we'll go to the page layout. So this is again a new feature uh, that we've just uh, rolled out. This is our first uh, stab at the page layout uh, tool. So let me show you how that looks now. So I'm going to create a new page layout, and on that I'm going to put the two policy holders. So the first thing I do here is create new. Okay, and then the first thing we need to do is give the page a name. So we'll call it a policy page and we'll just put policy holders, oops, holders as the label. And this is what we're gonna call our page. Now what you'll notice uh, immediately in the page layout editor is we have this thing called layouts, we have this other thing called components. And layouts basically allows you to set out um, the, the sort of the hierarchy of layouts you're gonna use to place your components, like an input field, a text box, rich text, or a checkbox. We're going to be adding combo box and table and content and all sorts of things as we move forward in the future. We've just released these first components. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a page layout that basically has a couple of things. One is that at the top level, uh, layout container is a group. And a group may be interpreted when it's run on the device as a set of tabs or it might be um, interpreted as maybe a, a set of different screens just representing each of the um, layouts inside the group. At the moment, the group basically represents a set of tabs. So I'm going to say that these, this is called a policy holders. Uh, and then in our policy holders group, I'm going to have effectively two tabs. And both of those tabs are going to, um, we'll put some components in them. So, the first tab I'm going to make is a horizontal layout. And what horizontal layout means is that anything that goes inside of it uh, will be uh, displayed as columns. Um, so you can imagine in the Salesforce page layout editor, there's those two columns. With the uh, horizontal layout, you can actually have as many columns as you like. In this case, we'll just have two, actually. So I'm going to call this um, the uh, policy. Uh, Okay, and let's call it policy, and then hit save. So that will have a, the tab will be labeled policy, and anything in that tab will be laid out horizontal, uh, sorry, horizontally, yes. And then I'm going to add another uh, tab, and I'm going to basically have this addition, maybe just have this for additional information. So I'm going to call it additional, and give it a label of additional. So this is something you're going to have to get a little used to, which is this uh, kind of hierarchy of containers. So we basically have a group. It has two tabs. We could reorder them if we wish. We'll leave them uh, in the order that they, that they are. So there'll be one tab of policy, one tab for additional information. Now the policy layout, I want to have two columns. One for the first policy holder, one for the second policy holder. So for the, for the main and then the spouse. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to put in two vertical layouts for each of those columns. So Bear with me, this is, uh, this is where it gets a little fun. So I'm going to add in my first one, which is going to be called main. And that will be where we put the main policy holder. And then I'm going to add another one, which is another vertical layout, which is going to be the uh, spouse. Spouse, spouse. So <clears throat> the main thing you need to kind of get... Um, sort of get to understand is how all this sort of hierarchy works. So you'll, you'll quickly uh, get used to this idea of these. So this is horizontal, so you can see the main and the spouse are now horizontally aligned. If I add an, added another container uh, in there, another layout in there, it would be it would create a third column. Let's just keep it at two columns for now. Now this is a vertical layout. So the next layout I'm going to show you is the inline layout. And the inline layout means that things in that layout will just appear side by side. 
Horizontal means they actually appear as like kind of structured columns, like a table. But the inline layout means they just appear side by side as, as close together as possible. So I'm going to add the first inline container in our main. And that's where I'm going to put the first and last name. So I'm going to put in here main names. I'm not going to label that. Uh, and then I'm going to put in another uh, inline container uh, in here. And I'm going to have that as uh, main uh, uh, extra. So I'm just going to put the additional lead information we're going to have. I'm going to do the same with the spouse. So I'm going to put, you see that you have to get used to the way the screen, uh, the layout shunt around. So I'm going to put spouse names, which would be where we put our first and last name. And then I'm going to add in another layout, which would be um, the spouse extra. Okay. And again, no label. So this is our container layout. It looks like quite a bit, but if you think about it logically, you'll see how it's all working. Now, now let's uh, stop adding layout and let's start adding some fields. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, an input field. And I'm going to make this for the first name of uh, the main policy holder. So I'm going to call this uh, main first name. Okay. And then I'm just going to chop off that and just make it first name. So that'll be the label that appears on the field. It's editable. We want to make it required. We'll set the size, and this needs to be numeric, of how many uh, characters they, can, uh, they should sort of see wide. So I'm going to say it should be about 25 characters wide and hold a maximum of 255 characters. And this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Now it's when the user types a value into this field, where should it be stored? So we want to store it in the policy main, that value that we have, and we want to stick it into the first name of the policy main. And then we can then put in here, you know, enter first name as a little helper information. We could add additional help info, but I think that's probably enough for the user. Click Save. And then what you'll see is that field has been added to our layout. Now I'll add another one, which will be the uh, last name of our um, uh, main policy holder. So I'll put uh, main last name. Again, I'll just chop off the last name bit. It's also required. Make it 25255. And then again, I'll bind it to our policy main. In this case, last name. And enter last name. Now, what you'll see, what you, you may not have noticed, which is a, a very handy feature with many who, is that uh, because we're able to bind field values or kind of uh, yeah, bind field values, um, fields to our values, and we have more than one value uh, in our flow, it actually allows us to create page layouts that contain information from more than one record, uh, for example, in Salesforce, because we can actually have two leads on the same page layout, and that's something that you can't do today in Salesforce. In fact, you, uh, when we launched the table and combo box, you'd be able to do things like you could have multiple objects um, being used on the same page and even coming from different systems. So you could load your orders from SAP, show that as a table list against maybe an opportunity that is uh, loaded from Salesforce as well as an account loaded from Salesforce and maybe even some color information loaded from Twilio, all shown and editable and manageable on the same page layout. So for you, you're just kind of using values. Um, and it's kind of this magic of the, the service bindings you saw in the type. Um, and I, and uh, I know that's quite a lot to take in. But hopefully you can get a sense of, of the power that you can harness there in building apps that cross data sources. So anyway, we can continue adding these fields. I'll now add another couple of fields that are required for creating new leads. So I'll just add those now. One will be um, company. So I'll just add that in here, company, uh, which is a little strange if we're uh, dealing with individuals, but we'll just add that. And I'll make this field a little bit bigger, 65, 255. So you just get a sense of, of uh, you know, that we can sort of adjust the field sizes. So enter company. Um, and we can kind of continue uh, doing this with all the fields. I'll just add uh, one last one, and then I'll fast forward so you don't need to actually see every uh, last field I'm adding.